Aotearoa and welcome to another episode of Rapa Nui Life. Today I'm going to share with you 10 very interesting kind of culture shocks that I had when I came to move to Rapa Nui. Now I'm originally from New Zealand, uh, which is about 8,000 kilometers that way. Rapa Nui Easter Island is known for its giant monolithic statues, and but it has a really kind of vibrant culture, but the culture is quite different to what I was brought up with. And being that I married into the culture, married into a family here very soon after moving here, it was really kind of interesting, these cultural differences. Uh, these aren't necessarily kind of real big shocks, but these were differences in the culture that kind of struck me. Some of them were very uh, shocking, <laughs> and others were just kind of interesting. I would just want to say too that I really love the culture. I live here for a reason because I enjoy living here. I love the people. So when I uh, talk about these cultural differences and culture shocks that I have, I certainly don't want to put down the people here. This is just kind of differences that I've noted and they're kind of funny and kind of interesting. So here we go. 10 of the biggest culture shocks that I had moving to Easter Island, one of the most isolated inhabited places in the world. So shock number one was just the fact that everyone kind of knows everyone. Everyone knows everyone else's business. If I walk into town, I have to say hi to probably a quarter of the people. They know who I am. Uh, they know what I do for a job. They know where I'm, who I'm married to. And I guess it's just small town life, but it was something that I wasn't really used to before I came here. And so one of the things I like to do is if I go over to Chile, I like to hang out for a few days just by myself. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to be alone. I've got a lot of friends over there that always want to hang out and I'm like, no, no, just give me a little bit of time to wind down. And I just walk the streets without having to say hi to anyone, without knowing anyone. Now, it's really cool knowing everyone, being part of a community, but it is something that I find that I have to really uh, have some time off the island to relax my mind a little bit from it. So in New Zealand, if the next door neighbours are having a party and there's a loud music on and it's annoying everyone else around, someone will probably complain or they will call the noise control. And it's usually seen that the people having the party are in the wrong and the ones that want to sleep are in the right. Well, in Rapa Nui, it's the opposite. If you're having a party, you have the right to have that party for as long as you want. Now, if you're a neighbour, you can come and join the party or you can just sleep through the party, but the party's gonna keep going regardless. And so that means that anyone else has a party, the people who had the party before either have to join that party or just put up with it. Get togethers and party atmospheres are really valued in Rapa Nui. If there is a party with loud music, don't think that you're going to be able to make them turn it down. If you're a tourist here, you'll probably just have to put up with it. I'm sorry, uh, because that's part of the culture here. Yeah, something that I had to get used to was the, the fact that they don't really do small talk uh, in East Island, Rapa Nui. So New Zealanders, we love to interact on, on small things. You know, we'll get together and say, oh, you know, what do you do? And do you play some sport? And your kids, what do they do? And what schools do they go to? And... We kind of just, there's this small talk going back and forth and getting to know each other. In Rapa Nui, people won't really talk like that on that level. Generally speaking, everyone knows everyone ev anyway, but people don't like to kind of reveal their whole lives because once you reveal your life on a small island, you kind of open yourself up for, well, maybe being attacked later on, showing people parts of your life that you need to kind of keep to yourself because it's a small island and people talk. Probably if you start talking about or asking personal questions about someone's life, they probably will move away from you and talk to someone else pretty quickly. Yeah, so it's interesting on a telephone call, I'll be talking to a friend and I will talk for half an hour and there won't be a single stop while we're talking to each other. We'll just sort of go back and forth. And if there was a 30 seconds where we weren't talking to each other, it'd be kind of really uncomfortable. And it's not uncommon where I get together with the extended family and we sit around eating and no one's really talking very much. It's just kind of being together, enjoying each other's company. What they will connect on is doing work. So the men will get around the barbecue and someone will cut wood and the woman will do all the salads and all that sort of thing. And they're kind of working together for a common purpose. And that's the way they really kind of bond uh, on the island. So this one's been quite trying for my, for my marriage because uh, New Zealand humour is quite based in sarcasm. 
saying the opposite of what you actually mean. Whereas in Rapanui, you say what you mean always. An example is when someone said, oh, your daughter looks just like you. And I said, yeah, but she's getting better. Don't worry, she's going to get better and look like her mum. And they would say, oh, no, no, I don't mean it like that. And they think they've really offended you. But, yeah, I've, I'm still trying to learn, still trying to figure that one out. The way they treat animals here is very different to my country and particularly dogs. Uh, dogs here really are seen as kind of dirty animals. In fact, one of the worst things you can say to someone is to call them a dog, a paihenga in Rapa Nui. And dogs generally are outside. They don't let them inside because they're seen as dirty. Yeah, interestingly, in New Zealand, the only reason you would put a dog down is if it bit a person. Whereas in the island, they will put dogs down or kill dogs if they attack livestock or if they attack chickens. But if they bite a person, they won't get put down because it's kind of doing its job. The main job of a dog on Rapa Nui is to protect the house. And so for them, you know, it would be wrong to put the dog down for doing its job. So the way they do funerals in New Zealand is, you know, someone dies, they let people know after three days everyone comes to the funeral, then they go to the person's house, they drink tea and eat cookies or whatever, pay their respects, and then they generally go to their houses and that's it. And it can be quite tough for the people that have just lost a loved one, especially if they don't have close a large close family. Well, in Rapa Nui, what they'll do is they'll actually have a funeral that lasts 30 days and apparently it used to be longer but they've actually made it shorter now just to 30 days and the idea that there is that if someone dies you have a period of time where everyone can come and visit the body then they will have the funeral but then after the funeral they have 30 days of kind of eating together drinking together and kind of the older people will often do this period of, of praying so most of the island is uh, Catholic so they'll spend like 30 days just like praying every single day and the idea is they're pushing through the spirit of this person to the paradise, getting them through purgatory. And the more they pray, the more they'll push them through. And it gives a chance for the person who's just lost the loved one to have people around. I mean, sometimes we feel we don't want anyone around, but at the same time, we kind of need people around to know that we're not alone. And but the idea is that there's always people at the house so that they don't feel alone through this difficult time. So one of the biggest issues I have in New Zealand is we don't really know how to say hi. I mean, generally, if it's a man and a man, you'll shake hands. But if it's a, a woman, sometimes you'll shake hands. Sometimes you might give a hug. So it can be a little bit awkward <laughs> sometimes. Whereas here, uh, you know what to do. So if it's a woman, you kiss on the right cheek if you're just meeting her or if you're seeing her. And if it's a man, you usually do this kind of handshake where you kind of pull back on the fingers or... There is the fist bump these days, which is actually a change from when I started, but they now do this kind of fist bump. <laughs> There's not too much on the island that I was really shocked with, but I have eaten horse a number of times on the island, which is actually very tasty, very good. But there's so many horses on Rapa Nui that every now and again they'll slaughter one and use it uh, to eat. And I honestly think they should do it more often. Uh, horse meat's very, very tasty, much more tasty than I thought it would be. Raw fish is something that people find a little bit shocking when they come to here. It's called ceviche, and the way they make their raw fish is with lemon. So it's kind of seared with lemon, but then they mix red onion and cucumber, capsicum, uh, and sometimes coconut milk, uh, and make this kind of raw fish absolutely incredible. Uh, fish guts is another thing that was kind of a little bit different for me. I remember when I first saw it, we cleaned the guts out, but then they cleaned the guts, took all the all the kaka out, and then they uh, fried it, deep fried it. It's actually very good. <laughs> I enjoy it now, but that was kind of shocking. Now, in New Zealand, we generally eat potatoes as a side or rice as a side, but in Rapa Nui, they'll often have taro, sweet potato, and yams as their, as their main side, which was something that was kind of foreign to me, but you get used to it and actually start to enjoy it after a while. The amount of people that play musical instruments on this island is absolutely incredible. If you're at a party or something, it's basically hand the guitar to anyone and most people can play a song. 
and the bands on this island I think are real class acts. They could really compete on a world stage and many of them actually have. So I encourage you, I'm going to leave some links in the description below if you want to check out some Rubber Noi music. But these guys are incredible musicians and just the sheer quantity of people that can play. An interesting concept on the island is this idea called umanga, which is kind of I help you and you help me. And so often people who are building a house, they don't have much money. What they'll do is invite 10 people over to help them and they need to cook them some food for the day and perhaps a few beers afterwards. And the idea is it's kind of like a festive atmosphere. Everyone comes together. They all help each other. When another person from that group needs some help, they all go over and help that person so it's a way of kind of building community being together but also really kind of helping each other out What's related to to umanga is the fact that up to about 30 40 years ago they didn't even have freezers or fridges on the island and really didn't have a lot of cash money coming in so there wasn't really banking there wasn't really storing food and so the way they invested was investing in other people so if you had extra uh, you would often give it away to neighboring families and when they had some extra they would give that back to you and so there was this yeah and so that's that's kind of the way they did life up until not so long ago but now with tourism and money and banks and freezers and that's changing a little bit but there is this generosity particularly with food I was brought up in a nuclear family we just had mother father three kids at home but here we often have connections to the grandmother and the cousins and their second cousins and so cousins are kind of seen as brothers and second cousins are seen as cousins and brothers and sisters are seen even closer and so there's this really kind of larger system of family on the island that I never kind of had much of when I was in New Zealand. In Rapa Nui they'll, they'll cook in a big pot they will always have more than enough so that if anyone else arrives there's always more to eat because there's always uh, extended family and stuff coming in. There you have it, 10 culture shocks that I felt coming to Rapa Nui. This is definitely one of a few videos that I'm going to do because there's still many culture shocks to explain. But I hope you enjoyed hanging out and we'll see you pretty soon. Awesome guys.